Hello and welcome to Victor George Leather Goods YouTube Knife Sheath School Volume 3. Today I'm going to show you the complete process of building this Mexican double loop uh, half skirt knife scabbard. So this thing was um, uh, a challenge to build today. You'll see all of the, um, the <laughs> problems that we had building this thing, but in the final outcome, I'm super satisfied with it and it's a great looking little sheath. Okay, uh, this was made popular during the Texas Ranger days and uh, a lot of Spanish, Mexican, and Native American influence um, was uh, put into this particular build. Um, these were popular because they could easily fit over the uh, uh, cartridge belts. So what they would do is it would come apart like this and they would just weave it back over their cartridge belts and uh, that's the beauty of this particular style of sheath. I'm gonna take you through the complete pattern process uh, of how I build a pattern for this style. And I think that's important for you to know how to make the pattern and then you can do all your magic uh, creativity on the blank canvas. So let's go ahead and get started and uh, let's do this. Let's jump right into the pattern process for this Mexican double loop half skirt knife scabbard. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of cardstock with a uh, perfectly flush 90 degree end. We're going to lay our knife on there. We're going to trace around the blade. And uh, remember the working edge of the blade is to the right for a right hand draw sheath. I'm going to use a 3 in, three eighths inch welt or a seam allowance. And um, you can do that however you like with a ruler. Uh, connect the dot method. A... Um, wing divider, a compass, whatever it is that you do. Uh, if you've seen volume one and volume two of mine, um, this is what I do, is I use this ruler and I go three eighths of an inch to establish my shadow line. And then that's how that uh, pattern develops for me. Anyway, I'm gonna take a moment, cut this out, and I'll show you how we draw a center line and uh, get this uh, pattern process going. All right, we have the sheath face pattern cut out, and now we're gonna establish the true center line of that. We're gonna take a four by 22 inch uh, poster board cardstock reference line directly in the center. Now I'm gonna take the sheath, and I have established the dead center of the top of the sheath with a self-centering ruler, and I put a tick there. Now I'm gonna place this onto the line flush up against the edge so that I know it's true. And I'm going to indicate the center line like that. And I'm just gonna connect these two lines. That is now our true center line to the sheet. All right, now with this uh, four by 22 poster board, we're gonna take it and we're going to match the center lines on that just like this and we're going to draw or trace i should say the sheath onto the poster board remember pattern process is the most important part of this whole process when you get this right the sheath will come out right okay once we have that then we're gonna take a larger ruler and we're gonna establish two more reference lines from the top corners of the sheath face up. And uh, we're gonna do that by using the center line as a guide, keeping our north, east, west, and south lines perfectly centered. It's gonna take a moment here. Okay, there we go. And we're gonna draw that up there. And we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Okay, once we have that, now we're gonna take a ruler that is two inches wide and from the top of the sheath face, we're gonna establish three two-inch boxes 
or blocks. One. Again, keep all our lines together. Two. And three. All right. Now we have our sheet face and one, two, three, two inch blocks. And uh, we're gonna take this to the next step. So we have our three two inch blocks uh, established. Take the center block and um, cut that in half, or don't cut it, but uh, mark it in half. And this is where your fold line is going to be. So that center two inch block is your fold line. And now we're going to take a three and a half inch uh, diameter template and starting at the two inch block closest to the sheath face, we're gonna do an inside curve. And uh, I think you've seen this before and just make sure those corners are perfect. Run that in. So on the third two inch block, take it to the corners as well but this time you can take it around this way a little bit further. That'll uh, come in the next step. So re replicate that process on the other side. And then on the top block here. And again, you can take it out to there. All right, in the center block for this style of sheath, what I do is I take this and I do an outside curve. So I line up those corners and I'm gonna do my outside curve. Slowly but surely, this Mexican loop scabbard is coming to life. All right, so now we have that established. Now what we want to do is we want to figure out what length of a skirt we want on this. So just take the initial pattern that you have and uh, place it on this line right here. All this is for is to establish where your skirt's gonna be. So I think, I think the skirt would look good right to about here. I'm just gonna draw a little bit of a tick line there. and give myself a little line here. Nothing more than visual uh, benefit to me. Now take, now take your uh, ruler and from these two outside lines here, we're gonna go a half, half an inch. So go one half inch. and draw it to that. Again, half an inch from that to there. Okay, for the skirt, the bottom of the skirt, take you one of these templates and find the circle that fits as close as possible to these outside lines. I think Yep, I think we're here. So take it to the line that you established for the location, get as close as you can, and then draw yourself your the bottom of your skirt, and that is that. So now the pattern is complete. And this is how it should look. Now, if you want, when I drew the outside curves here, this is the look that you're gonna get with that pattern. If you want um, a square look here, don't do the outside curves here. And what that'll give you is this look. It's all to your artistic interpretation. All right, so now once we have this pattern, um, looks good to me, we have the sheath face, we have the body, I've uh, drawn all the red lines here that you need to cut out, 
We're gonna go ahead and cut out this sheath and um, go ahead and prep it for actual cutting to leather. Okay, we have the pattern completely cut out um, and we're ready to just do a quick double check to make sure um, all of this um, will fit the knife. So take your pattern, crease it, fold it together, place the sheath face on the front like this. Put your knife in there. So you get an idea if everything is correct so far. And if you cut out your pattern um, precisely from how you drew it, you'll wanna cut it to leather just as precisely. Okay, so now on the sheath face itself with the blade on the right side, that tells me that this is in the correct orientation. So I mark on here grain side up for a right hand draw. You can put a star smiley face. I've seen all kinds of different ways. But anyway, I always cut on the grain side, so that's why I do that. So on this pattern here, we have to remember to reverse it. Um, so I mark on the opposite end, grain side up for a right hand sheath. That's how I place it onto my leather. So we are all systems go. I take a piece of eight to 10 ounce veg tan and uh, um, I find an area obviously for my sheath face and my body. And then I always have a straight edge for these stylus sheaths um, because we're gonna need a strap or two straps to go around the body. And I'll show you that in the fabrication um, part. So I cut myself a half inch uh, line. I'm gonna cut this out. I don't know how much I'll need. I might need another one. Um, obviously this is all excess. So you'll have to fit that to the sheath later. Anyway, I'm happy, everything's ready. I'm gonna cut this out and we'll get started. I went ahead and cut all the parts out from my eight to 10 ounce veg tan hide. And um, full disclosure here, I don't use uh, the prime leathers that I have for these uh, video mock-up builds. So just um, so that you know, if you're looking at this uh, sort of wincing a little bit, that's what it is. Use the best leather that you can afford. Obviously, you can also uh, line this sheath because there is gonna be some flesh side showing. I've done a little more preparatory work. I set my name st stamp on my loop stock here. I went ahead and creased it and uh, bone folder burnished the edges to give it a little bit of a look. I'm gonna be placing three brass style spots on there in a minute. Again, we'll show you how to do that. On the sheath face itself, I established my 3 16 um, stitch line, which is half of a 3 8 inch welt. And um, on my welt piece here, all I do is I cut it oversized, which makes it easier to trim later. I take the knife itself, I place it on that welt stock piece, I center it the best I can, and then I draw a line around it. This will be my cutout plug for the welt, so that way when the knife is in there, there's no room for swimming. There's no uh, movement whatsoever. A nice tight welt is um, nice. All right, so I'm gonna do a couple of more decorative techniques. Because these sheaths were um, Texas Ranger era, there was a lot of Spanish, Mexican, Native American influence. And I'm gonna place some spots and I'm gonna use um, some 100% uh, brass escutcheon pins. I'll show you that little technique um, here. Use that. Here on this particular sheath, you can see all of these escutcheon pins that I'd used, and um, they peen over real well. I'm going to show you that technique. There's uh, never a problem, and it just gives it a nice little look. So I will show you that as well. So let's go ahead and do a couple of these steps off camera, and then I'll be back to show you some details. Okay, I've uh, set up the straps now um, with the spots and the escutcheon pin spots as well. And um, these are ready for uh, final fabrication. Of course, they're still extra long. And uh, I'll show you how we trim those in a little bit. But anyway, of course, I lost the footage on how I set them, but I'm gonna show you here real quick. So I established the spacing with the sheath face like this. And uh, once I have the, the spacing, I place uh, with wing dividers three spots where the three points where the spots will go. Now for my escutcheon pin decor, um, it is a little time consuming, but uh, I do enjoy it. They patina, they get that vertigris after a while, and it just gives the, the, the sheath a little bit of a nice look. So I will just eyeball the center of these spots. 
That's where my scutcheon pins are gonna go. I take um, a block that has some holes in it and um, then I place the escutcheon pins there and find a hole. And I just tap them in without deforming the head, but I want that head seated nicely into the leather. And I take the other one and I do the same. And then once I have those pins in there, um, I will oh, just take a piece of scrap leather here and, um, and I take a number one setter tool for a size 14 rivet, copper rivet, and then I just seat those, trying to get, um, trying to do two things. Number one, really seat those well into the leather and, uh, and then give me a good flush on the back for trimming these escutcheon pins uh, directly to the level. Uh, take your piece of scrap leather on top of a little anvil, and then this brass is so soft that it's gonna basically splay, kind of like a clinch nail, into the leather. They, fat, they flatten well and clinch themselves into the leather and that's how I set a scutch and pins anyway then the other three dots will be the uh, for the spots and the way I do that on this particular size um, I will measure them these are three-eighths inches I take my wing dividers and I go just a hair smaller than three-eighths. And then on each side where the spots are gonna go, and the only reason I'm showing you this is because, like I said, I have no idea how any anybody else does this. Yeah, I'm probably way off. But anyway, I established my little marks, my three-eighths inch lines on each side of that center dot. And then I take a chiseled screwdriver and let me use a piece of scrap leather here. And then all I do, make sure I'm in camera, is take a chiseled screwdriver and I put a place for these flanges to go into. And of course, take your time and make sure everything's centered. Okay, once you have that, then it's nothing more than taking your spots, placing them in, pushing them flush. Now, I have this piece of 14 ounce um, sole leather. And what I do is I just take the spot itself and I set it in there, take my hammer, and smash them flat. And of course I do the same thing to these. The flanges need to come out just a hair. Push it flush. You can turn those over almost by hand or with a screwdriver. And That's how I set my spots. And the reason for these holes in this 14 ounce leather is so that you don't um, uh, deform any of these spots. So that's how I set my decorative straps. And if you are like me in this particular case, I use them um, all over the sheath. Initially it was for experimentation. Um, but they literally um, make a nice decorative effect. It's just time consuming, but at least now you know how if you feel like doing it. So let's get back to work here. Sheath face is done. My stitch holes are set up. My welt is ready. I'm going to go ahead and scratch both surfaces. I'm going to fit, uh, fix that up. And then on this uh, particular back piece, you can do one of two things. You can either fold it so where the flesh side is here, or you could fold it the other way. Um, I, I don't mind the flesh side if it's not being lined. 
Um, that'll work for me. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and make the sheath face. I'm gonna prep it, and uh, then we're gonna glue it and uh, sew it to this back piece, and I'll show you how we set up the straps and we are close to being finished. All right, we have all our pieces prepped. I went ahead and set up the, uh, the welt on the knife. As you can see, the knife blade fits uh, firmly inside that welt. There's not gonna be any play or wobble or anything like that. That's what you want, a good tight fit. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, trim the edges of this sheath face. I've established my glue lines on the front of the uh, body, and as soon as I get back, um, this will be sewn onto the back body. I'll show you how we set up the straps, and we'll take it to the final stage. So we sewed the sheath face onto the back strap. Um, the edges were sanded, cut flush, of course, and uh, edged and burnished. I'm going to go ahead and leave them natural. Um, just for this mock buildup, but you can also um, stain them dark brown. So anyway, once we get it into this position, we need to establish um, where we're going to put our straps. And um, there is no rules here, uh, whatever looks good as far as uh, you're concerned. So the bit is nice. We have symmetry and uh, we're ready to put the straps on. So the way I do this is I lay the sheath down onto the back panel, make sure everything is lined up, make sure everything looks even on both sides. And then I take an awl and I very lightly scratch on the inside of the sheath line there, just a light scratch right on the inside edge of that sheath edge. So that gives us our lines there. The first strap that I wanna put on, probably right in this area. So I'm gonna just give myself a little visual for the bottom part of that. And I put a little dot on there. Okay, so the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna use my half inch craft tool slot punch and the reason for that is obvious that we have a half inch strap for our loops. Now I'm not gonna put it, straddle the line, I'm gonna put it on the inside of the line. And um, so we know that that's the bottom. So right where that line is, and that little dot that we put on there to indicate, we're gonna put our first slot. And um, a good way of doing this then is just sort of giving yourself a straight line visual, put a little bit of a dot there and cut the second one. Now you can really take your time. Again, put it on the inside of that line. You can really take your time. You can measure at nauseum. And, um, and then that is our first line. And I'm just gonna set these in temporarily just to give me an idea of where we're at. Okay, and we're gonna just pull them snug. Don't worry about all this excess yet. We're just gonna pull them snug, gonna get an idea nice and straight okay I'm happy with that and um, the second strap again just eyeballing I'm gonna put on that line a small dot about where I want it to go the top of the uh, oblong punch and um, I'm going to what did I say like you can answer me. I think I, I did that on the top. Okay, yeah, that's the top. So on the inside of that line. Oops. Punch that through. And then we're gonna go. So you can see it's a hair off. Um, take your time. I can still make that work. But, uh, and then we're just gonna go across here. Just put a little bit of a dot at the bottom of the strap. And 
the inside of that line. Now I like to do my um, loops like this. The traditional ones is where you cut a hole on each end and cut some slits. What I find with that style is they have a tendency to tear out and deform. This gives it a nice blocked effect and um, I'll show you how we do that here as I continue on. All right, so now we have our loops and if you can t see, the reason we did that on the inside of the line is we don't, we don't want the slots outside like that. We want them nice and tight and you shouldn't be able to see them from the surface. Let's go ahead and take our straps. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, give myself a little bit of a case on each strap with a little bit of water. That's gonna help me bend them a little bit more. Definitely handsy work here. Yeah, you want them tight. And of course on camera, it looks real awkward to me. Let's, let's give ourselves a little bit of working room, George. Don't make it hard on yourself. Okay. Okay, I think we're we're starting to calm down a little bit here. <laughs> okay, just pull on both of those straps, get them nice and centered. You case that, that leather, um, put the knife inside there, it helps a little bit. And just pull them snug and make sure all your spots are centered. And then I'm gonna go ahead and break here because I wanna get a pair of scissors to cut so we can sort of form fit it as we get closer. Okay, let's uh, take a quick pause here. Let's go ahead and get back to manhandling this a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna set the, we're pretty close there. I'm gonna do some more tightening of course, but I'm gonna give myself a little bit of working room with these straps. So I'm gonna cut a little bit more. And what I'm trying to do is basically get it to that position and give myself a cut right there. Okay, so that one's getting close. Let's do the same thing with this one. You may think, oh my goodness, George, that is just a mess. <laughs> okay, so we're starting to Get a little bit closer and um, okay. All right, let's start pulling some snugness into that. And again, making sure it's centered as we can get it. Let's start on the bottom one here. Pull it nice and snug. Okay. Um, Happy with that. We can still pull it a little bit more. Good things don't come easy. All right, then here what I'm gonna do now is I'm about the center. I'm just gonna take my awl and punch it, poke it through to get 
all three holes like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna pull it super snug. And about the center, I'm gonna take my awl. Bunch it through all three. Okay, so now we have these set up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, um, off camera, I'm going to take a round end punch and I'm gonna punch all of these round. And, um, and then uh, we'll go ahead and seat those with a copper rivet and I'll show you how we do that. With all of that pulling and stretching and grunting, we uh, got the sizes down. We punched a, a hole big enough for a size 14 rivet in each strap end and in the center where that all originally gave us our marks. So we place these in to our sheath skirt, take a size 14 copper rivet, place it in there like that, and then, oops, that's the long one. We'll keep that one for the outside. If it was easy, everybody would do it. There's gotta be a little bit of effort, otherwise it's no fun. Okay, and then once we have that there, I have a cleat um, or an anchor cleat or whatever these things are called, and uh, it makes this job really easy. Now, this is usually mounted on a table, and we're just gonna set that copper rivet. Now, I probably will trim this a little bit not a hundred percent sure yet and we're going to take our number two copper rivet setter and we are good there and then we're going to do the same thing to our bottom strap get over there Take our copper rivet, right there it is. Put it through that hole and run these straps through there. Now, before I had this cleat, I would just take like a steel plate and put it back there. And, uh, but this, this boat anchor cleat, boy, I tell you, it's, uh, it has really made this job and many others. I can save it I don't think so nope all right I'm gonna put a pause something happened there and I'm gonna put a pause on this thing and I'm gonna get another copper rivet and we'll set it right this time absolutely no sense in editing that out because uh, that really just kind of shows the handmade process it's it um, is sometimes a little bit of a battle and I do take this extra step to have the loops separate like this in cutting instead of cutting slits because in the long term um, this is really a lot nicer okay and I think part of the problem is that this cleat is not bolted down as a sturdy platform so we're going to try it again here there we go now we got it Good. This one not so much, but that's okay. We can fix that. Okay, and I think the straps are okay. I'm not going to worry too much about it. And now we have those on there. And now it's nothing more than feeding this through there. Should be snug like that. 
Just feed it through until it seats into its position. You can block these a little bit more. And you can hear that nice saddle squeak. And there she is, all finished. I still may or may not tr trim those. They're really not in the way. They're not gonna bother anything, but uh, that is how we do a Mexican skirt, two-loop knife scabbard. Okay, a little bit challenging, but uh, we can't make everything easy in life, can we? All right, there you go. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, spray dye this for the final footage, and uh, that's it, it's a wrap. All right, well, thank you for uh, coming along for the ride on this volume three build. And uh, I think I'm gonna just go ahead and leave it natural. Um, I think the patina that will develop will make it as beautiful as it could without dye. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, there were some challenges. It's worth all the effort that we do to make these uh, products for people. So build one yourself and uh, like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at Victor George Leather Goods. And uh, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks.